Green Dem McGrath are here tonight. We've got Garrett Jameson. Magic from Jan Markson. Your musical guest tonight is Nisa. We've even got a surprise special guest, Mike Greta's here. Videos are by Dan Tamizian. I'm Josh Bigel and that's DJ Wetzel. And your host tonight is Dan Yalia. That's me. Wee. Oh man, you guys ever been to space? It's fucking crazy. Love space. You guys uh, hear about Trump doing the Space Force? He wants guns in space. I heard he actually already did a mission to Mars, and uh, the mission had just come back. So we'll touch back on that in a bit. But uh, I just want you guys to know I'm super happy you're here. Uh, please be super loud. Uh, this place is huge. How loud can you be? Show me, please. And that will do. That will do just fine. Um, just want to remind you guys, it's up to you whether you have a good night. It's not our fault. Um, if you want to have a good night, you can have a good night tonight. Just laugh. That's all you got to do. We'll do the rest. We'll even make you laugh at points. So we'll help you with that. I just think that everything's about perception, you know? It's about how you perceive things and how we do things. We have to make the right decisions, and you guys have to laugh because of those decisions. So let's see if we can do that. I mean, everything is really about the decisions we make, right? Like, uh, do you guys remember uh, Martin Luther King? Remember his wicked speech, I had a dream? That was great, right? He had a great dream. He wrote it very well, his speech. And he made no mistakes when he said the speech. And then now it's really memorable. Everyone knows the I had a dream speech. But anything could have happened, you know? Anything could have went wrong. What if Trump tried to do that same speech? It might have been memorable, but it would have been different. It might have sounded a little something like this. I had a dream. There's these half fish, half pigs that stand for social inequality. We need to kill them. Still memorable. And then for sure the next day he'd go back on whatever he said. But uh, it's just what you do, right? Like uh, musicians also. Some musicians choose not to have vocalists in front of their stuff, like Miles Davis. Maybe he would have gotten a vocalist who would have been horrible and ruined a bunch of his music, you know? Uh, or like uh, Dave Matthews is a good example. I just feel like Dave Matthews should have done a kid's album because uh, I feel like that one song that, that, that everyone knows it just goes with everything. Like uh, if you want to do a kid's album, this is my impression of Dave Matthews uh, doing the ABC song for a kid's album, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, N, T, U, V, W, X, N, Y, Dan, 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 M, Z, can I, can I, uh, A, man, just one second, there. now yeah, a, I know a, my A, a B, C, hey, Dan, uh, can I, just hold on, uh, yep. next time Sorry, won't, won't you, you sing, sing with, with me. me. Okay, hey, so... Hey, uh, how's it going, Dan? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? This is uh, my friend Garrett, everybody. Hi, hello. Uh, what I, what I, are you doing here? Well, I found the microphone back there, and I remember you right. wanted me to give you suggestions on what to do during the show. Right, I, I messaged you on LinkedIn a week ago, and I asked you if you had any suggestions for the show, but I didn't mean come on the show and give them. I meant what? give me them and then we'll do them maybe on the show. Yeah, but how else will the show work if I'm not just right here giving you the suggestions? We're pre -play Comedy doesn't work that way, man. I wouldn't know. Okay. I got, here's my first suggestion. Can I tell the audience my suggestion? Well, let's leave it up to them. Do you guys want to hear his first suggestion? Yeah! Okay, so okay. this first, okay, thank you. So this what first is suggestion is a really great suggestion. It, uh, it kills every time. Perrier Chugoff. What? Perrier Chugoff, man! Okay. This isn't the worst idea. There's nothing funnier than Perrier okay, well, and chugging off. Why Perrier? Because it's really hard to drink. 
Okay. Really fast. All right. Well, you're here, and that's not the worst idea. So I want to I want to chug off against somebody. Is there someone in the audience that wants to win some free tokens tonight? Who wants to chug off? Who thinks they can you chug, chug off? a Perrier faster than Garrett? Who wants to chug okay. off? Okay. There's a lot of fingers pointing at this guy right here. Come on it's up, one sir. Perrier. Come on up. Come on up. Peer pressure. Don't listen to peer pressure. Come on. You got Come this. Come on up here. I'm going to give you two give it up for this gift guy. certificates. Sorry, Come over here. There's stairs you. right here. Come on up. Oh, shit. Oh, no. I shook up the That's Perrier. Shit. That is, is not good for the Perrier. No, no, no. Okay, so. Uh, what is your name, DJ sir? DJ Wexel. Anthony. Can you queue up some, like, chugging music? Can we? Uh, this is Anthony, by the way. Give it up, give give it up, up for Anthony. Anthony. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna say one, two, three, go. When I say go, you guys are gonna chug Perrier. Whoever gets the most done in the amount of time that's the least boring. Yeah. We don't need to finish it. If, if we don't wanna be here in 20 minutes and everyone's like, at least it was a free show. Oh, he, he cheated a little bit, but we're gonna give it to him. Okay, so we're getting ready. You got the music ready, DJ Wexel? All right, you guys ready? One, two, three, chug! Oh, it's... Okay, okay. Maybe we should have put some napkins down. Yeah, that's not good for anyone. We should have bought the extra insurance. All right, this is good, this is good. Keep going, guys. Oh. This is close. Garrett, Garrett, you are almost done and you don't look like you're feeling well. <laughs> Here we go. We're coming to the end. Garrett, you got one more sip. Garrett is the winner. Luckily, the loser gets the prize, but you're a winner in my eyes. Give it up for Anthony. Garrett, are you okay? I heard. How are you feeling, Anthony? Not very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anthony, was it worth it, though? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> there we go, guys. So if we need another contestant, you heard it here uh, first. It was totally not worth it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you for allowing this time to shine, Dan. Yeah, Garrett, I hope you feel better. I will. Not. Oh. Give it up for Garrett, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Poor guy. Poor guy. Um, so I was uh, watching TV the other day, and uh, I, you, you guys, uh, I, was saying, I was watching the show about lawyers. Hey, so uh, Dan, I, Dan, I got a, uh, another suggestion. Um, can, we, can we do something else now? Because I feel the Perrier thing worked. Maybe we can do something yeah. else? Another yeah, we can do something else. I honestly didn't write that much material for oh, the beginning of the show. Perfect. So. Can, we, uh, can we do the thing with the cameras where we uh, do voices over people? Sure, I guess. We've done it before. It went well. So, Kyle, do we have some... Can we shut oh. the lights down a little bit, maybe, so we can see? Oh. Uh, there we go. Hello. Maybe we should go over here, Garrett. Okay, maybe go over here. Let's go over here now. Oh, nice. Going okay. for a walk. Okay, so I'll do the voice of the uh, girl, and then you do the voice of the guy. Do you okay. guys know these people? Okay. <laughs> you do the voice of the guy. You go. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're splitting the bill. I'm going to split it. Yeah, we're gonna split the bill. Oh my God, you're taking another sip of your drink? What is your deal right now? I don't know, it just seems like you're more interested in sips than me. I love my sips, this is with Perrier. Oh, that was my drink. I just noticed that was my fucking drink. <laughs> I love drinking your drink, babe. Yeah, well, you maybe know? you should order your own drink. What is mine is yours and yours is mine. We've been dating two days. Don't do this to me, Suzanne! Not in public, all right? I don't know what you're getting at right now. What is your end game, Suzanne? No, <laughs> everybody. Are you talking at the same time as me? I'm Wait. sorry, what? Wait. Are you? Uh, 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 that's why. That's it, why we're dating. That's why we're, uh, you know, I was going to do a whole breakup thing. I'm kind of dealing with no, something yeah, right now. Yeah, uh, like, can we go to a different couple right yeah, now? Yeah, let's sorry, go to a different couple. This couple reminds Garrett of his ex, I think. Yeah, sorry. Suzanne. Let's go to maybe that couple on the corner there. They're eating. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, there's yeah, some right. people. Uh. Yeah. Oh, these, no. These, no. No, they're going they're, away. They're walking away. 
That guy. And yeah. uh, the... No. Is he talking to anybody? Just do his thoughts. Do his thoughts, Garrett. Do his thoughts. Okay, is that, that, that couple up there. Let's do that couple. Okay, sure. All right. Oh, he's going down. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yep. Sorry. <laughs> this is harder. Oh, here than... we go. This, this, okay, these this, two. Yeah. Do them. All right. Uh, you, I actually have a real car. Yeah, you should see my real car. It's a car. Oh, yeah. Yep. I drive cars here sometimes, but that's not because I don't have a real car. I just like fake cars sometimes. What was your favorite fake car? Oh, I like the Bamborghini Tumtosh. Yeah, the Bamborghini. I love the Bamborghini. You make up fake cars? I got a few cars in my garage right now. Uh, some of them are ma uh, Matchbox cars. Oh. Yeah, that's one of my favorite <laughs> Matchbox cars. Yeah. My uh, wife took uh, my car in the divorce. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Why are you doing this to me, Suzanne? Yeah, she's like this couple is reminding him of I'm his sorry. divorce as well. I shouldn't have been gone down that road. Can we go to someone else, please? Maybe this, one more this couple. This couple is reminding me of my... Maybe don't even mention your divorce in this one. Okay, fine. Okay, those... Yeah, that... Anyone you want, Kyle. There's a good one. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is, I, are they kissing? No. Okay. Fine. Right. Okay. So <laughs> here, maybe. Oh, here we go. This couple. Oh yeah. Sip, sip, sip. Yep. Anyway. Hmm. Mm, you like to yeah. take sips? I love taking sips. Well, I. You can't believe you drank all my drink. We're getting out of here. You beat me at Pac-Man twice now. I can't believe this right here. Well, thanks my... for thanks for letting me borrow your sweater. <laughs> Is uh, I can't, I can't believe uh, I think my my nose is running right now. L little little booger coming out. I gotta wipe my nose once again. So like, you think <laughs> I'm funny? <laughs> <laughs> Please pay attention to me and not him. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have went on. I thought this was what a double date was. I think I just picked out some chicken out of my teeth. Okay, looks like we are here. <laughs> Why aren't you paying attention to me, Suzanne? Yeah, okay, okay. cool. Thought sorry. that was gonna happen. You can go, Garrett, we're fine. Okay, we tried I'm that. so sorry. That, that almost worked. That almost worked, kind of, yeah. That was, thank you. I, yeah. I had to get some shit off my chest. All right, give it up for Garrett, everybody. That was his last time coming on stage. I do have a few jokes here. So, I was talking about Space Force and uh, how, um, Hey, Dan, you know, I got one other idea, one last one. Okay, for this last, I, maybe it's the last one, who knows, but, you know. Okay, this is the last one, though, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got one more thing he wants to try. I'm willing to do it. I'm feeling good tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Thunderman! <laughs> so quick that thunder follows my fist. I'm gonna tell you some jokes. Hopefully they're not too quick for you guys. First joke goes like this. I was at a concert once and I had to wear earplugs. Earplugs is a great way uh, to be uh, responsible and irresponsible at the same time. This goes out to the stoners. I don't know if they're out there, but this one's out for you guys. Yeah, this table. <laughs> uh, does anyone else here think that jellyfish are just ghosts trapped in plastic bags? the thunder. Don't do what I did and confuse your kaleidoscope for your pepper mill. Whoa! Yeah. 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 Oh! I have an uncle. I have an uncle. Uh, he has, uh, he suffers from a Peter Pan complex. Does anyone know what a Peter Pan complex is? Never grow old, exactly. So he suffers from this uh, Peter Pan complex. We came home one day, and he was flying around the living room, just like Peter Pan. I was like, holy shit, my uncle's just like Peter Pan. 
Upon closer inspection, he had hanged himself from the ceiling fan, right? So he's like, oh, just flying around there, right? And much like Peter Pan, he'll also never grow old. Yeah. Are you done? I'm, I'm done. Now. You're done? I'm done. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Give it up for Garrett. Seriously, the last time he's coming up here. <laughs> I've been trying to get to this. There was Space Force did do a Mars mission. They just returned. And we actually have a special news report on that very mission. Let's give it over to the DG Special News. Welcome back to the DG Special News. Billionaire Glenn Plegg and his company Spacetime recently joined up with the government's Space Force program to send a team of researchers, scientists, and even some tourists to the planet of Mars. Most of them returned yesterday, and they join us on the show tonight. Joining us now is entomologist Gary Rudden, researcher Gloria Human, pilot Don Kelman, tourists Maggie and Roly Harper, and of course, we are joined by tech prodigy Glenn Plagg. Glenn, I'm going to start with you. What was the purpose of this mission, and was it a success? Well, Alex, first of all, great questions, and thank you for asking them in the manner that you asked them. I'd also like to say that I'm beaming to you live via VidCell, my voice over internet protocol uh, software proprietary to my company, only 10,000 times faster than Skype. That's it, 10,000 times. <laughs> But um, yeah, the mission to Mars was to, uh, in order to terraform Mars, we need to know what Mars is made out of. And uh, so we need to discover the things that make up Mars. Otherwise, we're just going to be dropping nuclear devices on Mars and no one can live there. <laughs> and uh, did you get the information that you were looking for? No. No, actually, definitely not. It was an absolute failure, an epic failure. Uh, we did not discover any of the things that we were looking to discover. Um, but I will say this, we only uh, managed to leave one astronaut behind. So in that sense, the mission was a success. Well, surely you learned something, uh, even from these failures, uh, something that can help the program move forward. No, no, I would say we didn't learn very much. I, uh, oh, you... Are you, are you still getting me? It looks like you're clipping on your end. It looks Okay, uh, it looks like uh, Glenn is frozen, uh, and we're going to move on to some of the people we have here actually physically were on the Red Planet. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, Gloria, you were sent up to do a geological survey, uh, collect some samples. Uh, what did you discover? Oh, um, yeah, not, not a lot. <laughs> Didn't discover a lot. We have some red sand, so there is that. Okay, and uh, what was most surprising to you uh, when you arrived about the, about the Red Planet? Uh, I guess I was most surprised by how much I hated being there. Yeah, I, I hated being there. You couldn't pay me $5 million to go back. Yeah. And so you're present to you in the event that there is any space debris, space garbage, any uh, gravitational anomalies to be navigated? Uh, uh, no, my other area of expertise is... Um, water snakes, and I was not allowed to bring them with me. Now, Don, you were the pilot on this mission. Uh, obviously, this is a fairly unique flight for a pilot. Uh, what was it like? Well, for the most part, uh, I couldn't tell you. I was, I was asleep for the vast majority of the mission. It, uh, it was pretty shitty and pretty boring. Yeah, going to Mars is like waiting in line for a very fun ride at an amusement park, and then you get to the end, and it's just a pile of dog crap and you're made to lick it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Shit. But this was a brand new uh, craft built and designed for this mission. You're the first uh, pilot to operate it. Uh, what was that like? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of new tech, certainly that we got trained on. Spent the last four years training and then once you get up there, the computer does everything and you just sit there. Uh, but certainly if some kind of computer error were to occur, you're the trained pilot there, you can intervene and take over manual control of the craft. Well, certainly if the, uh, you know, the first system goes down, then there's the backup system. And uh, if that backup system also goes down, then I would need to, you know, activate the third backup system, which is just a red switch. And this is a well-made, fairly robust switch. Looks sturdy. Never, uh, never had to switch it. 
Okay, uh, well, it looks like we're getting uh, Glenn back. Uh, Glenn? What the fuck that is happening? It's just good. What the fuck is that? Fuck. This is something Glenn, we can, can actually hear me? Hey. Fuck, come on, Vince. Fuck, come on. Fuck. Okay, uh, well, we do have to take a short break, uh, but don't go anywhere. We will return with more of this interesting conversation. Dan, back to you in the rec room. Sweet, so that's happening. Hopefully we'll check back in with them later. Um, let's get this show going, you ready? All right, I'm gonna bring out your first stand-up of the night. You've seen him on Just For Laughs. He's done stuff with Kevin Hart. Give it up for Mike Rita! Keep that music going, keep that music going. Toronto, I can't feel you, man. We got the rec room tonight. Let me hear everybody. How's it doing? What kind of fucked up remix is this? Oh my god. This is a fucked up room, huh? It's like a trippy adult like arcade. You walk around, you're getting drunk, you're all fucked up, and then you see a kid, you're like, this isn't an adult arcade, there's still fucking kids here. I wanna talk shit and swear and tell people that they fucking suck at video games. You know, I like this kind of place too. This is the future. This is it. Because uh, we all grew up like uh, with video games and shit like that. Like we're the video game generation. We played a lot of video games and now we wanna get drunk and high and come play them in, uh, in public. Like there were people playing, I was playing Mario Kart high against a little kid and I beat him and I looked at him like, yeah, fuck you. You become a real piece of shit in this fucking place. You're playing against kids when you're drunk. They don't fucking care. You're ruthless. They're like, you suck, sir. You're like, you're a piece of shit. Shut the fuck up right now. It's the best kind of place. And I like this kind of place too. Like I, I always like coming to places like this because it's trippy. It's a good mix of people. Like, uh, like I came in here and I smelled like weed and when I walked in, some lady was with her kids and she looked at me and she kind of gave me like a face like, oh. But who the fuck brings their kid in here? It's a bunch of people getting drunk and high and, and eating fried chicken. We don't need kids. We don't need kids. We need more video games so that there's not any fucking lines out there for fuck's sake. Somebody clapped for that. They're like, fuck yeah, buddy. This guy's making some points I can agree with. You know what I like too is that the, the culture of the world is changing. Like in this room, I can imagine, clap if you don't smoke weed. Let me hear you, Toronto, if you don't smoke. Let me hear you, it's not your thing. Four people there, and the group of older folk right in the fucking front. You old, you four fucks are the same as these four fucks right here in the front. There's five of you. Oh, this guy. Uh, this guy didn't clap. He's smart. He stayed the fuck out of that shit. I only say, I only seen four. I'm like, oh, well, only four of you. You're like five. I'm like, this guy didn't clap. This guy, is, this guy doesn't want. This guy doesn't want none of my shit. But clap in the rec room if you do smoke weed and you do like it. Let me hear you right now. Clap, make some noise. <laughs> hey, you hear how much happier the second group of people were than the first group of people? Because the first group of people, I mean, there's no pride in not smoking weed. You're like, yes, I have made that choice and I stick by it. And the rest of us are like, fuck that. We heard about it, we tried it, we liked it. It was all right. And we're about to legalize it in this country. You guys excited about that? You guys excited about legalized weed? It's kind of nice. You know what I like that in, in Toronto, it makes no fucking difference if it's legal or not. People smoke it like it's been legal for years now. Toronto's one of the only cities in the world where you can walk down the street smoking a big fat joint, nobody gives a shit. Even an old lady might look at you and be like, hey, wow, excuse me, holy fuck, what are you doing? That smells amazing, where the fuck did you get that? And you're the only getting local dispensary, you know? You guys might not like it, but you guys are the people they're gonna target as soon as it becomes legal. You're gonna see other older people on TV being like, I had arthritis in my knee and I had tried everything except marijuana. <laughs> and now, and that, guy, that same guy's gonna be running, you're gonna be like, holy fuck, I remember when I used to run. <laughs> That's gonna be us. You guys ever think about how we're the last generation that truly got to enjoy illegal marijuana? Like all of us grew up in a world where we weren't buying medicine, we weren't buying weed as a medicine, we were buying fucking drugs. Drugs, strap it on, we're doing drugs. And it's crazy to think, because all of us are gonna be old potheads. You ever think about that? One day we're gonna be like 70 or 80, and we're gonna be older, we're gonna have to explain to our grandkids about what it was like. They're gonna trip out. Like you guys aren't old enough to be alive for prohibition, but your parents were, you know? And your parents probably might have told you like, oh, back in my day, Margie, we had to go all the way to Barrie, Ontario for a beer. 
That's going to be us. And I hope to fucking God we all lie to our grandkids. When our grandkids come up to us and they're like, Grandpa, Grandma, I heard you were alive during marijuana prohibition. I hope all of us are like, who the fuck called it that, for Christ's sake? Prohibition? It didn't stop anybody. I was high all the time. I hope when they ask us what it was like too, we, you know, I hope they're like, Grandpa, I read in my history book that drug dealers were making money from Mexican cartel and people died and they had guns and helicopters. I hope we're like, helicopters? My drug dealer didn't even have a fucking cell phone all the time, for Christ's sake. Helicopter? What the hell are you talking about? And they're going to ask us what was it like and I hope we lie. I hope we just start like exaggerate. I hope they're like, what was it like when you had to call a drug dealer? Oh, it was an ordeal. You had to call him and sometimes he didn't have anything so you had to call another guy. And he didn't pick up. Then you got real serious. You had to log on on Facebook and find someone there who smoked weed on a regular. What the fuck was that? Is some guy just sharpening a giant knife? <laughs> Knock it out back there. You know what I like about Toronto too? We're very multicultural. Like, uh, clap in this room if you have Canadian parents. Let me hear you Canadian kids, like uh, if you're straight up just Canadian. I'm happy for all 32 of you. <laughs> clap if you have immigrant parents. Let me hear you right now, people with immigrant parents. Some people didn't clap for anything. Who the fuck are your parents? So, this guy didn't clap for anything again. And his friend is the one who called him out. He's like, goddamn fucking Bill didn't clap again. The name's Georgie? Georgie, hey, the name's fucking Georgie. You don't see the tracksuit? It's a fucking Georgie. You look like a fucking 50-year-old Georgie. If there was a guy named Georgie, it would be this guy in a fucking tracksuit in the front row. It's Georgie. Is your name actually Georgie? No, I don't even know where I got Georgie. I thought you said it. He's not 50? This guy's not 50? A little more than that. Buddy, if I looked like you at 50, I'd be so fucking happy. Look, at this is me at 28. This is me at 28. You at whatever age you are. How old are you? 60. What the fuck? This guy could still get more pussy than me in this fucking place right now. Fucking Georgie in the tracksuit. Hey, sweetie, you want to play Mario Kart? I got a real car over here. I got an item. It's a fucking shell. Listen, it's my number. 416. <laughs> Fucking Georgie! You guys have, uh, okay. You're like 60 something, my parents, 60 something. My father just retired, actually. 65. Do you guys have Facebook? You do? Not you though? Not you, George? You do? Not you. And you guys are mostly parents. I imagine you guys might have kids, some of you guys. <laughs> Clap in this room. If you've got your parents on Facebook, let me hear you. If you've got your parents on Facebook, let me hear you guys. It's a thing now, you know? Years ago, your parents never had Facebook. Then one day, I had a little Portuguese mom. I never thought my little Portuguese mom was ever gonna get Facebook. And then one day, I got her a tablet. And I go, you want Facebook? And she goes, no, I don't want Facebook. I don't need Facebook. I go, why? You don't want it? She goes, no, I don't want people to see my life. I went, what fucking life do you have? You're like 62 in your home all day. What are you going to put on Facebook? Okay, today I'm going to make a, a soup. Please, I'm cutting the potato. Like and share with your friends. Like, it, it used to blow my mind that my mother didn't want Facebook. And then one day she got Facebook. And she added me. And I go, you like Facebook? And she goes, yeah. I go, what do you like about it? She goes, you can see everybody's life. It's very nice. <laughs> and nowadays it's grown. At first she didn't know how to write. And I would just log in and there would be likes. I would log into 30 likes. And in the last year or so, my mother's learned how to write and it's insane. Because now she just goes around on my Facebook and she finds pictures of me smoking weed and she'll write on it, there's drugs in the picture, please delete it. And lately it's been getting worse. A few weeks ago she wrote on my profile picture, the picture that I just fucking posted that day. It was in everybody's timeline. And I want you to know, <laughs> it was a picture of me and my friends at the park and we're just smoking a joint, okay? No biggie. You can see weed in the picture, and my mother found the weed in the picture, <laughs> and she wrote, Mikey, more drugs, please delete, so scary. The picture got 10 likes. Her so scary comment, almost 52 fucking likes, okay? 
You know how funny that is? And when I called her, I go, well, you have to delete it. You can't write that kind of stuff. And she goes, why? I'm not going to delete it. I get more like than you. You have to delete it. And I go, no, that's not how it works. This isn't a democracy. We're not voting on my Facebook. You delete it. And she doesn't delete it. And I begged her already to delete a bunch of weird shit. Because last year, I had to put her straight. Last year, when my mother started learning how to write on Facebook, she had to learn that not everything from Portuguese to English translates. And last year, when I went to Just for Labs, <laughs> I wrote on my Facebook, hey, I'm going to Just for Laughs in Montreal. Thank you for all the support. It's been a crazy ride in my career. Uh, you know, I couldn't be there without you guys. And the, and the Facebook status blew up. It got fucking thousands of likes, man. And, and hundreds of comments of people congratulating me. And my mother's was the one that blew up. Because <laughs> in Portuguese, in Portuguese, you don't finish it off with LOL or XO. You finish them off with Beijing. And the short form for that, that's the word kisses. You know what that, the short form for that is? It's fucking BJs. Fucking BJs, man. <laughs> My mother wrote on the status of my career, Congratulations, lots of BJs. What the fuck? No, you have to delete that. And when I called her to delete it, she had no idea. I go, well, you have to delete it. BJs is, is bad. And she goes, what do you mean? I almost have 200 likes on the Facebook. I go, yeah, you have like 200 likes. Because people like it because BJ is bad. And she goes, what is BJ? I go, BJ is when you put a penis in your mouth. And I swear to God, she goes, ah! And I go, why are you yelling like that? She goes, because I have the BJ for everybody, Mikey. And I go, Mom, that's fucked. You can't do that. It's all, man, I'm telling you, man. Get, when your parents start getting Facebook and start using the internet, it's fucking weird. Last year, my father retired, and we got him, we got him a cell phone. And when we got him a cell phone, I asked him, why do you want the cell phone? And he goes, because everybody has cell phone. I don't have cell phone. I want to use it. I like that time you show me. I like the cell phone. Remember the time? And he was talking about a time that I showed my dad that you can watch porn on a phone. I swear to God, man. And he's an old conservative man. And it was the first time in my life I ever seen my father break character. I swear to God, we showed him that you can watch porn on a phone. <laughs> and when we went, Daddy, you can watch people have sex right now. I swear to God, we were at the cottage. And we went, you can have sex right now. And he went, no, come on. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, show me. Let me see. Come on. And he started walking over, and it was the greatest. Like, man, we go, Daddy, what do you want to see? And he goes, I want to see a lady have sex with a man. I go, what kind of lady? What kind of man? And I swear to God, he goes, man, I don't know what kind of man. Whatever man there is. I go, yeah, you can choose white, black, Asian, Spanish. He goes, oh, I don't know. Let me see one black guy. And I swear to God, on the outside, I was like, okay. And on the inside, I was like, ah! And I, I, I swear to God, I started asking him, I go, why you want to see a black guy? He goes, why? It's no good. I go, yeah, you can see, but why? And he leans in, and he goes, because everybody talk, 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 but I never see. And in my head, I was like, this guy doesn't want to see a black guy. He wants to see a black dick. Man, we showed my dad the biggest one we could find. It's a guy named Mandingo, and it's fucking insane. When we showed my dad this guy, Mandingo, he didn't even believe it. And I showed him, I go, Daddy, look at this. And he goes, this is no real. This is no real. And I go, it's real, and it's not even hard yet. And he went, holy shit. This guy have the best job. And I went, the best job. And the minute the dick goes in, you hear the lady on the phone. My dad's watching. She starts going, ah, ah. And my dad goes, hey. And he slaps the phone down. He goes, tell me the truth. I can't see this. She going to be OK? Guys, I've been Mike Reedy. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal tonight. Thank you, Rec Room. Hey, Keep can we it give going it up for Dad? Mike Reedy. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Did you have a good time? Uh, the best. Do you have any shows that you want people to know about coming up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, host, a, I host a weed show in Toronto every Sunday night. Uh, you can come check it out. You can smoke weed in the venue. Uh, it's called Stoner Sundays. Don't forget that shit. Good night, everybody. Yo, Stoner Sundays, it. Mike Reedy. All right, we got some music for you. You guys are going to love this lady. She has a sweet, sweet voice. Please listen to the sounds of Nisa. Thank you, Nisa.
got one more in this little set for you. I'm Nita. So good. Her album will be coming out April 13th. Look for it online. I'm going to keep the name of it a secret till her next performance. Hey, Dan, I got another suggestion. I was just thinking if we could uh, do another, another suggestion. I was thinking about another yeah. challenge this time. Does anyone want to do another challenge with Someone me? Someone else want to win a prize? You? You can do it. You put your hand up super yeah, quick. Yeah, you were, you really. Hey, get I up like here. Yeah. your energy. Welcome. I like your hair. I like your energy. Okay. Here we go. Hi, what's your name? I'm Jen. Hello, Jen. Give it up for Jen right here. Give it up for Jen. All right, Garrett, what is it that you want to do this time? And this time, for God, for the love of God, this is the last time. What's okay, up? Okay, so can you hold the microphone to my face while I... 
Reveal. All right. Tide Pod, Tide Pod Challenge right here. No, 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 no. Tide Pod, no, Garrett. No, no, no. Do you don't have to do this, by the way. I'm very sick. Okay, well, you can just have the prize. Here's a couple tickets. Give one to your friend. That's for some uh, free play in the arcade. Guys, play some arcade games after this. There's also a virtual reality Ghostbusters game. Really cool. And they're switching it over soon, so get in there. You guys ready for your next act? All right, we'll keep it going. I want to hear you guys get super loud, because he deserves it. Marito Antonio Lopez! Fuck yeah! What's poppin'? How's everybody doing? Make some noise, rec room. Everyone in the rec room. Make some motherfucking noise. Brown dude sitting with all white people. Make some noise, bro. You made it. You made it, bro. I respect you. You know what I mean? You and me. It's us together. Okay? And I don't even know what type of brown you are, bro. Okay? You could be Latino like me. You could be Arabic. You could be the hottest real estate agent from Brampton. Who knows, bro? Okay, all I know is that you're killing it. All right? And somebody from this table right here, after the show, you are going to adopt me, okay? Because I feel like one of you has access to a cottage. You know what I mean? Right? Especially you two right here. Right? I feel like you guys are super Canadian, you know? I feel like when you guys fuck, autumn leaves start falling on the bed. Okay, Sarah McLaughlin starts playing a live concert in the fucking foyer. You guys even know what a foyer is? Huh, puppy, you know what a foyer is? Yeah, it's a room where white people keep their shoes, okay? An entire room for zapatos, what is that? I didn't even have my own bedroom growing up. Okay, I shared a room with my brother till I was 17, okay? You know what that made me, guys? A great masturbator. I will bust a nut in silence, I swear to God. How you guys doing? <laughs> you guys doing good, right? I, I do what I respect. Like white guy with an Asian girl fighting racism with your dick right now, bro. Let's keep it the fuck up, right? All white couples, you should be ashamed of yourselves. What's wrong with you? Stepping it up. Some of you guys are looking at me like, oh shit, I bet they ran out of comics, so they got a dishwasher from the back to tell some jokes, right? Like I'm just in the back scrubbing dishes, and they're like, yo, we ran out of comics. Put a nice shirt on Hector. Follow your dreams. And I'm like, despacito. Moving those hips. Yo, where are my Latinos at tonight? <laughs> All right, fuck you guys, then. That's straight up. I'm going to identify with the Asian table. That's what I'm doing. And my brown dude. Yo, brown bro. After the show, you and I, we're going to be friends, OK? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to climb on your shoulders. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be like a brown transformer. It's going to be the shit. Okay, we're gonna go out into the streets, we're gonna fight crime, you do the beating and I'll do the shit talking, it'll be awesome. Right, you can even help me pick out a tall girl, you do the fucking and I'll whisper poetry in your ear, it'll be the shit. Like roses are red, violets are blue, we're gonna fuck the shit out of you. But yeah. I, uh, I, live, I, I, I live in Toronto, but I'm from Calgary, Alberta. Blah, 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 blah. Any Calgarians in the house? No? I love Toronto. Toronto is sick because it's multicultural as fuck. Okay? This table is not an example of that, but it is. Okay, it is. I love Toronto because we got great food. We got great sports teams. We got great venues like this. Okay, but I didn't even move to Toronto for any of that. I swear to God, 
I moved to Toronto because of fucking Drake, okay? I love Drake with a passion, all right? I study his lyrics. Guys, he has a line where he's like, yo, take you to the Scarborough Bluffs. Throw you off a cliff, boy. You guys hear that poetry? The first time I heard that, it changed my life. Okay? Because you don't hear shit like that in Alberta. Okay? All you hear in Alberta is fucking Nickelback. That's it. All right? And everybody drives a truck with balls on it. Okay? You don't even start the truck. You tickle the balls and it goes. So when I heard that line, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna start saying that shit to everybody, okay? If you call me short, throw you off the Scarborough Bluffs, boy. If you get my order wrong at Tim Hortons, throw you off the bluffs, right? But one of my friends is from Scarborough, and he was like, yo, buddy, have you actually ever been to the Scarborough Bluffs? I was like, no, man. Why would I go there? Drake throws people off of there. That sounds frightening, okay? And he was like, no, buddy. Yo, it's actually quite beautiful. All right, this guy shows me a picture of it, guys. It's fucking breathtaking. I want to have my wedding there. Okay, and that shit got me mad. I'm like, yo, Drake, come on. Why are you lying to me, bro? You can't throw people off of a picnic zone, okay? All right? You can't throw people into a body of water where white people are sailing. That's not gangster. Okay? That's like doing a drive-by shooting on skis in Banff. They will call the cops on you. You know what it looks like? It looks like the cliff where the baboon holds Simba and Lion King. It's amazing. Okay, and there's rules to the game, all right? Even in Ontario, when you dump a body, you do it in Hamilton, not Niagara Falls. Okay, because they will call the cops on you. You don't want to disrupt my new family's vacation. You don't, right? Like you ladies too, you look like you sail every day. All right, I feel like if you ever went to my country, El Salvador, you would get kidnapped right away. Like the minute you step off the plane, potato bags are going over your head, you're done. That's what it is. But uh, I love doing stand-up, right? Love it. But if I could do anything else in the world, I swear to God, I would be a rapper. Yeah. I went to New York seven years ago to go follow my dreams. What'd you say? That was the joke. <laughs> This lady literally thought I was the dishwasher. This is the greatest moment of my career right now. Somebody hashtag the dishwasher got jokes though. Latino as fuck, I hear children laughing. This is my nightmare right now. Nah, but I'm not a dishwasher. I got bars, okay? I wanted to be a rapper, I swear to God. I went to New York seven years ago to go follow my dreams, okay? I went out there with my boys and I told them, listen, man, I'm gonna go out into the streets, I'm gonna battle someone, Pop Daddy's gonna see me, Jay-Z's gonna see me, I'm gonna become a star. And they were like, all right, let's do it. Guys, we went to a bar in Brooklyn, we started taking shots, I took three shots, I blacked out. Okay, I'm a little dude, all right? Back then I was even smaller. I had a shaved head, no goatee. I looked like a Latino Caillou. I was adorable. Okay, and I can't do a lot of things because I'm small, all right? The only thing I can do because I'm small is take a bath in the bathtub comfortably. That's it. I can swim to the other side. But other than that, I'm fucked, right? Have you guys, yo, have you guys ever drank so much that you black out and you come to in a different location? Guys, I blacked out, I came to, I wasn't even at the bar anymore. I was under the Brooklyn Bridge, 
surrounded by six Puerto Rican dudes. Okay, I was in the middle of a rap cipher. My dreams were coming true. All right, and they were staring at me like, what you gonna spit next, son? And I was like, fuck, I don't know how to rap. I'm from Calgary, okay? But at that moment, it felt like Biggie's soul came into my body. Biggie's a rapper, okay? And I start, you know who Biggie is. Look at this guy's eyebrows. This guy is the most gangster motherfucker in Toronto right now. Look at his eyebrows, okay? All right, this guy has more coconut oil on his eyebrows than I do on my entire body. This motherfucker is shining right now. Yo, dude, can I say something right here? This guy right there. Bro, I don't like how your Adam's apple is bigger than my torso. I don't like that. Okay, you right there with the hoodie, okay? I feel like you don't even have sex with your dick. You just tell girls to climb on your neck like this. Real shit. What was I saying though? Oh yeah, Biggie. Biggie's soul came into my body. Rap cypher, I start rapping incredibly, okay? I was like, yo, you can't knock the flyers. Don't stop the riots. Arms too short to box, so I throw rocks, Goliath. Oh! And then they beat the fuck out of me, guys. <laughs> it was the worst, okay? It's, it's too much, I can't drink. Who's drinking tonight? Make some noise. I can't do it. I can't, bro, I can't. Cause I'm a little guy, all right? Listen, even when I'm older, I'm never gonna take Viagra. Cause I don't think my little body can take a whole pill. All right, you guys know when you put a hot dog in the microwave and the splits in the middle? I don't think you guys got that joke. It's gonna be my dick. Fuck yeah. Yo, you guys want one more from me? Marito. I'm working my dick off here. I'm gonna break my vocal cords, bro. I, uh, I love white people. Mom, dad, love you. Okay, I love you guys with the pen. You know what I've never said in my life? What's for supper, mom? Never. That's a very white thing. That's a cottage thing. So uh, I've been hanging out with a lot of white guys from small town Ontario, right? And I love them. I love my boys, but I'm starting to sound like them, okay? I used to be a cool dude. All right, I remember when I used to get excited, I used to be like, yo man, let's turn up. Let's get lit. Where the hoes at? Right, now I'm saying weird shit like, oh fuck yeah, bud. Okay, even when I used to get diarrhea, I used to make it sound cool. I used to be like, yo man, my stomach is turned. Where's the nearest toilet, son? Moonwalk to the bathroom. Okay, now I'm saying weird shit like, oh, boys, got a case of the green apple drizzlies. I could shit through a screen door and it wouldn't touch wire, bud. Yo, I swear to God, I, <laughs> you see that? All of you should be doing that. That joke is amazing. This guy's the greatest. You want to know why he runs Canada? Because he laughs at little minorities. <laughs> I swear to God though, I lost my phone this morning. I searched for hours. When I finally found it, these words came out of my mouth. Well, there she is. There's the old trout. All right, thank you guys, I'm Marito. Keep it going for Marito. Wait, Marito, come back here. You got any shows coming up? I do. I do. Uh, I'm going to be... Actually, you know what? I don't. <laughs> but follow my shit. Follow me on Instagram, at No Champagne Poppy. You can also check out some of his music 
running at the mouth. Look it up on the internet where he lives. Okay, guys, we're going to switch things up for you. It's going to be a variety of things tonight. Do you guys like magic? Oh, I like magic, too. So wait two seconds, and magic will happen. Give it up for Jan Markson! All right, thank you so much. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. I have a magical microphone in my collar right here. Actually, we're going to try a little bit something different. I'm not exactly a magician. I actually grew up in a Russian circus. I was a clown, an acrobat, uh, a magician, and today I do more of a mentalism kind of approach to things. So I'm going to actually work with a little bit of people in the audience. Um, now, I'm not as funny as the gentleman before, but however, if I fail, you do get to laugh at me. All right? Deal? Cool. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I actually grew up in a Russian circus. Like I mentioned, both of my parents were clowns. So, you know, it's tough. It's tough life, as you can imagine. And, um, well, growing up, I knew that I had really big shoes to fill. You know what I'm saying? Now, the, Well, you laugh, but that's my life, sir. You see, um, they actually wanted me to be a juggler, but I didn't have the balls. So instead, I got into magic. And more specifically, this mind-reading type of thing. So I'm partially like psychic, partially telepathic, sir. Think of me as like a psychopathic, or as my wife likes to call me, like a, tele, uh, tele, what are you, a telepathetic. All right? Cool. Uh, sir, we've never met before, have we? No. Just want to make sure they can hear you. We've never met before? No. No, and you seem very happy about that for some reason. All right, now, can we just get the, this microphone also to work? Thank you. Oh, it was you that wasn't working. <laughs> All right. Sir, would you stand up just for a moment, if you don't mind? I'm not going to... No, don't worry. We're not going to embarrass anybody, by the way. We're not going to do anything strange. I'm just going to get you to think of stuff in your head. Uh, sir, what is your name, sir? Danny. Danny? Um, do you mind actually joining me up on stage right here? Guys, give him a big round of applause. Danny. All right. And then there's a, there's a girl sitting right here. She's looking at me, thinking in her head, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. What's your name? Stacy. Stacy? And what is your real name? Penny. Penny. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> See, girls, they don't tell me their name right away. Stacy, would you come join me as well? Guys, give her a big round of applause. Let's see who else we have here. Oh, well, you're pointing at somebody else. You're putting them on the spot. Like, that's not fair. How about this guy right here? He looks really interesting. Maybe it's the beard. What is your name, sir? Aaron? Okay, that's not going to work for me. I don't like that name. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Aaron. Aaron, I'm, I'm just messing with you. I like your tattoo. Is that a tattoo in your hand? Yeah? Guys, give Aaron a big round of applause. Come over here, sir. All right. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, people get nervous. There's nothing to worry about. I know what it's like to be really nervous, especially, come over closer, I just want to make sure the light is in your face, yeah. yeah. I always get nervous when I go on a date. You know, last time I actually went on a date with this girl, you know, I had to end the date real quick because I caught her thinking of somebody else. Now, because um, I'm a mentalist, you see there, Eric? Yeah. So I caught yeah, her Aaron, thinking, Aaron? Aaron? Yeah, with Aaron. I'm sorry, it's okay. you're going to have to sit down then. I was looking for an Eric. Uh, no, I'm yeah. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm actually going to try to read your mind. Here's the thing. When I grew up, I used to play this game with my friends all the time. I would think of a number from 1 to 10, and I would uh, get my friends to guess what number I'm thinking of. You know what I'm trying to say here? Sure. Yeah? No, I'm just kidding. I never had friends. But I, uh, I did get pretty good at this game. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the microphone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to try to read my mind. I'm going to think of a number okay. from 1 to 10. You're going to say it into the microphone so everybody can hear you, okay? Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Look at my eyes. Yeah. Here we go. Eight. What? Eight. Eight. Wow. wow. That was amazing. Guys, give him a big round of applause. That was so easy. That was so easy. What do you mean that was easy? Oh, okay. Yeah, just thinking about you, it. Yeah, yeah. You think that was easy? I got it. Yeah. No, no, because you thought you got it because it was, uh, you know. you said that I got it. You got to yeah. speak into the microphone. Nobody can hear you, sir. It's because you said that I got it. Yes. So uh, Some of the I people there don't actually believe what's going on. Do you mind if we do this one more time? Yeah, yeah. But this time we'll do a three-digit number, okay? okay. I'm going to write it down, too, so I can't yeah. cheat, okay? Uh, let me see here. Is that going to be... Good for you guys to see this way? I'll show it, I'll show it to at least as many people as I can. Here, here's what we'll do. You didn't see what I wrote, did you? No. Okay. If you had to guess, yeah? Yeah. If you had to guess, what is the three-digit number that I'm thinking of in my mind? 312. <laughs> You're so confident. You like... I had it before you yeah. even wrote it down. What number did I write down? Fuck can you just... Off. No, no, but if you don't mind, come, on, come over here for a second. What number did I write down? It's 312 right here, yeah. 
Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing else here. That's just a blank piece of yeah. paper. It's interesting. Guys, yeah. give this guy a big round of applause. But I don't disappear here. Don't disappear. What we're going to try, uh, try to do here, um, I'm going to try to guess your underwear colors. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. I know you're not wearing underwear. Don't worry, sir. I know you're not wearing underwear. Um, instead, we're going to do this. I'm going to get you to think of a person from your life. Somebody uh, with an easy name to spell, but somebody maybe from your past, from your childhood, elementary school, high school, as long as they're alive. We don't want to do that freaky stuff, right? So as long as they're alive. You have somebody in your mind? Sure. All right. Come over here, sir. Come on my side here. You're going to write down the name. Please don't show it to anybody. When you're done, you're going to flip it down like this, okay? okay. Go ahead. And um, I'm going to get you to think of um, a drawing, something that you can draw and show everybody at the end, okay? Now, no. Hold on a second. Okay. Now we just thought of... All right, there are some kids here. So just something else. And also, the, come on, that's the obvious one. Everybody's thinking of a rocket. OK? You have something in your mind? No, I'll let you No, come on, I only have 10 minutes up here. <laughs> Jeez, Penny, don't make me regret choosing you. <laughs> you ready? You're going to do the same thing. Are you finished, sir? Yes. All right, you're going to go over there. You're going to draw your picture, and you're going to put it, uh, no, no, you're going to go over there so that you have a table to use, and it's safe. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to hide yours. Go ahead. She's very secretive. She's very nervous. I'm going to move away from you. She, she wants to, us to move away. Now, Aaron, did you say your name was Aaron? Yeah. Aaron, with an N. With an N. Yeah. Aaron, don't turn your back towards the audience. Okay. This is an old circus trick. It's because we used to work with horses, and you never know when a horse can kick you. And also, sometimes you eat really bad cabbage, and you fart a lot, and it's not nice to the people in the front row. It's just common sense. That one's just for you, for okay. sure. Yeah. Now, I'm talking to you on purpose. This way, you understand. I can't, I'm looking at you, at your beautiful eyes. I cannot see what she's drawing. Yeah. Can you see what she's drawing? No, don't say it. Don't say it. Can you see it? No. You can't. Say it into the microphone. No, I you cannot. You can't even see it. Yeah. Now, can you let me know when she's ready? Looks like, looks like she's ready. OK, please hide it. Yes, to her. Here. Can I put it in here? Uh, sure. You want to? Go ahead. <laughs> Slide it in. Go ahead, carefully, face down, face down, paper face down, jeez. Some people make it easier for you, you know? Thank you. Um, did you whisper to me at any point what it is that you drew? Do you, sir, uh, please don't forget what you uh, wrote, yeah? Would you do me a favor, can you seal this up yourself? It's from Dollarama, please make sure you use a lot of spit. Thank you. All right. She's using her finger, that's uh, it's not going to do it. All right, let's get going, guys. Please don't disappear on me, no pun intended. Just stay where you are. Aaron, we're going to start with you. I have a book here. Come a little closer. I want everyone to see this. Uh, and just hold on to it. Please don't let this guy do anything. He looks very sneaky. Thank you. And I don't mean just to you. I mean also to the envelope. Um, sir, I want you to look through the book. Make sure it's a real book because the reason I'm asking you to do this is because nobody else can see what you're looking at. So just make sure. Th those are real different pages, different words. What you're gonna, in fact, you can tell I never opened this book in my life. Um, never read it. I've never read it. No, I don't know how to read, sir. I'm from the circus. Yeah. Here, I'm going to give this to you. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you this marker as well. We're going to go through the book like this. You're going to say stop whenever you'd like. At any point, listen to me very carefully. If, you, if I stop here and you don't like that, you tell me move it. Move it that way, move it this way, go, go do it again. I really don't care. It just has to be your choice. But it, wherever you stop, you're going to look at the first word. So in this case, it's that. In this case, it's new. In this case, it's woman. You see they're all different. You're going to look at the first word. You're going to memorize it. And you're also going to memorize the first number of the, there. So 150 is the page number. Yeah, yeah. Page number and the first word. Got it. Did I pick the right person or did you smoke some weed before this? Because it might, weed, like, might be difficult. Smoked, might be difficult. didn't smoke a little bit of weed before? Like, it's just you, that, sir. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's just you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, cool. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Say Go stop whenever you want. Go, Go ahead. Stop. Okay, you got to do it in between the two covers. way too quick. Everything is quick when you're high, sir. Everything is so fast. I know. We're going to slow down for you. a little bit slower this time. You ready? All right. Here we go. Say stop. Stop. Okay. Change yeah. my mind. I changed my mind. Okay, we're okay keep going right. a little bit. Just, little, okay. okay. Right. Stop. Okay. Jeez, you want to change your mind again, maybe? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Really? All right, yeah, I'm good. Did you already forget what we were doing? Yeah, you have wait, to remember wait, wait, the first, I, yeah, yeah. first word show, show and the, the first, page show number. The first word. Yeah, no, no, yeah. both the page yeah, okay. number two. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. okay. Go ahead. It. I'm gonna look at you guys. Can you see me over there? Yeah. All right. Take a look at the first word. Memorize it. Circle the page number, please. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Circle oh, the circle, page circle. number. Oh, Jesus. What is he doing? Sorry. What is he doing? I thought I just had to remember it. Right? Give me a break. Give me a break. When people give you the instructions from give the audience. Break, right? Here, hold the book in your okay, hand, sir. 
Jeez, I knew that you're going to be a problem, but it's not your fault I picked you. You picked me. Yeah, you I thought know. I was Eric, I and I'm not, so. That's true. Okay, check this out. I want you to understand, because you look like you might have a thing with a sinuses infection, the way your voice is. You, you know, a lot of people think, and I'm sure. I mean, it's called being a Jew, but. Uh, yeah, no, no. I guess, what? yeah, we. No, we Jews have, have bigger nose like me. Yeah. You see, it's uh, no sinus infection. But I'll teach you something. Look at me. Uh, you grab a marker and you just take it like this, it's from the internet. Yeah. You take and you, you sniff it like this. Now that just kills your brain cells. That doesn't clear your sinuses, sir. Okay. What you want to do is close the cap and then just go <laughs> like that. Now it just, just, it clears everything up. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's why it was so slimy when you were like touching it. Night. That's right. Wednesday night for you. What? Okay. All right. That's strange. Uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab a chalk here. I'm going to grab a chalkboard. Wow. Where did this chalkboard come from? Magic. <laughs> think of that word in your mind I want you to understand something yeah. there are like 500 pages in this book you could have picked any page in fact you actually changed your mind <laughs> okay. and you really could have picked any page yeah. do you remember the word that you memorized in your mind there yeah, yeah. okay uh, can you put your finger tip like this for me your fingertips why, why is your hand your, your right hand is different from my right hand what's going on there that's, that's better alright thank you close your eyes focus on the word Thank you. Now tell me something. What is your astrological sign? Say it into the microphone, please. What is September 1st? Virgo. I'm a Virgo. A Virgo. Yeah, yeah. You know what that means, right? No. It means absolutely nothing. So it's a fake science. Just focus on the word. Focus on the word in your mind. Don't forget what it is. Focus on it. The one thing I, I can tell you right about with him is when he's going like this, he's like, okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. It's, it's not a very long word. It's not complicated. It's not complicated, it's not complicated at all. And I feel like you have a deep connection with this word. Very true. No, it's a, like on a deep level, very true. There's also, okay, I understand. There's like a symmetrical type, let me, like an odd number. So it's symmetrical. You see what I'm saying? It's one and then. Yeah. Now, sir, you know, sometimes this doesn't always work, right? Because if you have people, if you have people that are like, you know, they're a little high or they're a little drunk, it might not really work that well. Are you all right there? Yeah. Okay. What is the word that you looked at in that book? Say it into the microphone. Drunk. I'm sorry? Drunk. Like this? Thank you. That's impressive. I, I, you could have really picked any word. I just want you to know that. What, do you remember what page you picked? Yeah. What was it? What? Are you going to guess? The page. Or are you going to guess? Do you remember what it was? You I, remember, I remember what it was. Yeah. What was are, it? are you going to guess, though? Or? I'll try. Why don't you say it first, and then I'll guess. What, what's the joke like, or what's the, like the... I just want to see if you actually picked the word drunk, to be honest okay, with you. Can, yeah, you can no, find it if you want. Okay, that's three, what I'm asking. Three, find the word. It's 310. 310. Okay, so that's what I, that's exactly what I was thinking, 310. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you get a bigger reaction for this than for the word. So just, oh if you don't mind... Page is missing. What? No, no, hold on. You must have picked a different page. Are you sure it's 310? It goes from 308 to 311. I'm a little confused. Did you rip this page out, sir? No. No? So you actually went through the book. You told me to no, go back, I change circled it because I was stop too high to circle it myself. I stopped where you wanted. You circled it. You remember circling something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't drunk or anything? This is, you were. You know what? If you guys don't mind, the people there at the very, very back, there's a guy with glasses sitting there. Uh, sir, would you stand up for a moment? Can you please check in your back pocket instead of your condom? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But right behind you, there's an envelope. Look up. Would you please bring it up to us, sir? Guys, give him a big round of applause. This is, this is kind of strange. It's a little bit strange. Let me ask you guys something. You ever have a psychic experience? And what I mean by that is like, you know, you get this feeling like, like somebody calls you and you already know who it is before you even pick it up. You know what I'm saying? Let's call it caller ID, okay, Aaron? That's not, that's not psychic. But we're going to show you something really strange. Would you point that towards the light? You see there's something in there? It's almost like it's a page out of a book. Would you rip it on the side of the envelope and just take that page out? And sir, can you grab that book and just pull it back onto that page 310? Pull it back as hard as you can. That's it. Just pull, break the book. Don't, like, rip it in half. Oh, you don't want me to rip it in half? Well, no, just, <laughs> you're pretty strong if you can rip it in half. Yeah, pull it all the way back. Pull it all the way back. Yeah, that's it. Sir, what page number are you looking at there? Uh, it's 310. What is the word that you're looking at, the first word? Uh, drunk. Kiss? Can you guys just check if that would, if that would maybe, we could. 
Can you show the audience? That, just lift your book up, sir. This is why we don't, you know, I should ask if you people smoked before the show. Here, why don't you do this? You hold the page. You hold the page. I'll hold the book. And go ahead. Let's see if this matches. Check it out. The glove fits. Pretty strange. Yeah, I'm going to give you the book. You have the rest of the book. Thank you so much, both of you guys. Give them both a big round of applause. Thank you. All right, now, I did promise to try to read your mind. You guys, uh, you guys still remember me? I'm the mentalist from the beginning of the show. Uh, can I try something with you, sir? Sometimes it's easier because if they don't have the hair, the information travels uh, a little bit freer than that. Um, let me try something here. Come join me over here, sir. Um, come join me over here. A lot of dust. Don't worry, it's not cocaine, ma'am. It's just chalk. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to give you a microphone. I keep forgetting that people need to be able to hear you as well. Okay. Sir, be honest with me, please. At any point, did I come up to you? In fact, you were in the front, so that would have been hard, but... Did I speak to you at any point, did, I, did anybody at all come up to you when you were in here and ask you to think of a name? You didn't know this was happening at all. You, no. you were very hesitant to even come up here because you thought I'm going to do the whole disappearing pants thing or hypnosis and then crawl around and all that. Not a disappearing Not tonight. Part. That's no. Thursday night, no. sir. Yes. Yeah. That's right. All right. Focus on the person you thought of in your mind, yes? Okay. Okay. You can see already by his face. You can see, this is a male. This is a male that you're thinking about? No. Good. Very good. We're on the right track. We're on the right track. Sir, you know what's interesting is, um, you, you know, this is a person who's obviously strongly connected to you. I believe it might even be a person who's here tonight. Um, it's obviously somebody from your immediate family. So let me just see if I can. It's not a long name. Because with your eyes, your, your eyebrows, you see they're just going like... <laughs> Right, that, if that doesn't help me in any way, I'm just letting you know there's something okay. you want to check that out. All right. Um, you know what? For the first time, would you please tell everybody, uh, what is the name of the person you thought of in your mind? The one that I wrote down? The, yes. Mary. Like this? Yes. And is she sitting right in front of us right now? No. No? Is this your daughter then? No. No? Is this your son? No. No? Hmm. I didn't say I was a real mentalist. <laughs> guys, give him a big round of applause. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, guys, by the way, I forgot. To, hold on, sir. I have a ticket for you for $30 worth of these uh, coins to go play all those games. Thank you look. You. Yeah, no worries. Make sure you get one for me, wherever that guy is, Aaron. Penny, do you remember what you drew? Okay. Put that down for a second. I'm going to give you this chalkboard, you're going to draw it one more time, except you're going to make it a little bit bigger. Make sure everybody can see what it is. Take this, don't start yet. Don't start yet. Don't start yet. Did I say don't start yet? <laughs> All right. Come a little closer. I want you to look that way. I want you to imagine, look that way. All right? Imagine, look over there. Imagine. Imagine what you drew, yeah? Okay? Okay, perfect. Now look at me. Close your eyes and look at me. Okay, no, no, look at me. Close your eyes, but look at me. No, it's just... No, no, close your eyes. And then just look at me through... That's it, like that. Imagine, imagine... Oh, you're telling me a lot more than I asked for. Yes. You're here... You didn't just come here to see me, did you? You didn't hear Jan Markson is going to be here and you came. That's not why you're here. No, you know you had a chance to lie just now, but that's fine. Um, you came here because there's an event going on. This is not just a, 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 another Friday night for you guys, is it? No. I think, do you mind, go ahead. Why don't you draw what it is that you drew there? It's interesting. No idea. I mean, maybe. So. Mm -hmm. Whoa, hold on a second. You're making me nervous. This really shouldn't, shouldn't take so long. 
that's fine. Is that Mona Lisa or something? Or you really went on detail there. Guys, I want you to understand something. A three-digit number, I say there's millions of three-digit numbers, but really there's like less than a thousand, okay? A name? I mean, who is Mary? Tell us, who is she? We want to know. Girlfriend? Does your wife know about this? Or is this, did I just, did I just bring this up? I'm so sorry. You're not as well. This is too confusing. You're a confusing man. I don't know what's going on over here. You know what? I'm just going to move on. My point is this. Whoa, what? My point is this. Every person I pick will draw something else. You understand what I'm saying? What you initially thought of was obviously extremely perverted, and I'm glad we didn't choose to go with that. I'm glad you moved on to this. So on the count of three, we're going to show it to them. Ready? One, two, three. Guys, give her a big round of applause. Thanks so much. It's a card for you. Guys, my name is Jan Marks, and it's a pleasure to perform for you. Remember to always think of happy thoughts. You never know who's listening. Thank you. Good night. Keep it going for Jan Marksen. Thanks, Jan. You can check. You can check Jan out on uh, Penn and Teller's Fool Us. Uh, that's where I found him, and he's uh, he's great. Um, I'm going to keep the show going. We're going to check back in with our DG Special News team. Alex, what's going on with that Mars mission? Welcome back to the DG Special News. When we last left our conversation, it had devolved. Gary, you're an entomologist. Uh, you were sent to study the effects of the Mars atmosphere and environment on different insect species. Can you speak to that? Yes, yes, that's it, you know what an entomologist is, so that's good. Uh, I did do that. I was supposed to bring uh, bees onto the planet and see if they could survive with no oxygen. And what did you find? They can, and they loved it. And they filled the planet pretty fast. Okay, so now that, that sounds like a finding. That sounds like a, perhaps a notable discovery. Yeah, it could have been, for sure. Um, but the thing is, is the planet sucks so much, uh, and now it's just infested with bees. So you can't really take a step without worrying that you're going to be swarmed by these bees. So if you weren't able to uh, do as much of your research as you would have liked, how did you uh, deal with that downtime? Uh, missed my daughter's graduation, so... That sucked. Okay, fair enough. It uh, doesn't sound like too many of these uh, people uh, had a very enjoyable time on Mars. Of course, they were there to work, uh, not to have fun. So I'm very eager to hear what these tourists, these first space tourists, felt about their trip to Mars. Rolly and Maggie Harper, thanks for being here. This must have been quite an adventure for you. Interesting. Yes, it was. Uh, it was interesting. Um, interesting to spend millions of dollars on something and just hate Every second of it. Yeah, we we really hated mm -hmm. going there, uh, being there, and coming back from there. It was uh, actually, if anything, it was a bigger, more intense emotion than hate oh. that probably hasn't even been labeled yet. Yeah. Okay, certainly. But you were the you were the first uh, non scientists, non researchers, just tourists to go to Mars. That's that's an accomplishment. You'll be remembered for that. Is there a feeling of pride? Mm, no, I do not feel proud at all. This is actually. I think one of the worst decisions I've ever made. We showed up at the air, the space port, port and space we port, yeah. sat in the okay. seat and it took an extremely long time to get Very there. Very long time, you know, and we had been to Hawaii before and Hawaii is a, a treacherous, yeah. uh, you know, plane ride over the seas, yeah, yeah. nine hours. But when it's, you land, there's something to there's do. There's something to do, you know, Mars, Jurassic Park was filmed there. Yeah, yeah, Mars, there's nothing... Nothing, Nothing has mean, been filmed there, actually. We would have killed each other if we hadn't brought that deck of cards. <laughs> Thank so. God for that deck of cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like driving for days and days to get to the Grand Canyon, and then you get there, and, and it's closed that day. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we have a transmission that was received not too long after your party returned from Mars. Uh, this is a recording from the space station on Mars. Let's listen in. Hey, guys. Uh, can't seem to find you anywhere. Uh, I really hope you didn't leave already. <laughs> I really hate it here. Please say you didn't leave. <laughs> Is anybody getting this? It's a nightmare here. <laughs> I swear you guys wouldn't leave me. That's crazy. Guys? Guys? Wow. All right. Uh, I think uh, Glenn is back up. Glenn, Glenn, are you there? 
Yes, uh, sorry, I just had to jump on Skype. Okay, so it turns out that the passenger, Glenn, that you lost uh, has been stranded, and uh, they're stranded on Mars. And that is why we are very excited to announce that uh, Space Force, in conjunction with Space Time, will be returning to Mars with a mission of 100% beekeepers. And, uh, you know, we're looking for the natural enemy of the bee. So if anybody knows, uh, please let us know. We haven't been able to find it. Uh, we have some guesses, maybe Hummingbird? Well, that doesn't make any sense and it sounds terrible. Thanks very much to all of our guests for being here. Uh, this was the DG Thank Special you. News. Have well, a good night. I can hear me, but I'm not going back. And uh, fuck Glenn. Okay, fuck you too then. Okay, Mars seems pretty shitty. You guys ready to keep going with this show? All right, we got two more acts. It's gonna be fun. This next act, one of them just won the John Candy Award. His name is Colin Mockery. The other one just shot a movie called Magic. They'll be touring together. Give it up for Colin Mockery and Deb McGrath! Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, would you like a cigarette? No, thank you. I don't smoke. Uh, uh, I just realized I don't smoke either. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. What a fool I am. Oh, Offering no. you a cigarette that you don't want and I don't have. <laughs> no. What a fool. No, that's all right. I, I thought it was charming. Oh, did you really? Yes. Oh. In an old world kind of way. You know, giving me a cigarette when we now know that it would seriously shorten my lifespan. Good thing I didn't have one. Yes, it is a good thing. You didn't have one and I didn't smoke it as a result. <laughs> well done. Lovely wedding, wasn't it? Yes. It, it really wasn't what I was expecting. Oh, you mean that the bride and groom went together? Yes. Yes, yes. In, in the same room, yes. That's yes. exactly what I was referring to. Yes, I know. This is my third Skype wedding this year. Oh, is it? Yes. <laughs> you know, call me old-fashioned, but I believe when people start out their life's journey, Together, they should be, you know, together. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more if I was agreeing with you, which I am doing right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, romance used to be so romantical. Yes. You know what I mean? You'd see someone across a room and your eyes would lock. Yes. You'd look at them and you'd memorize every detail of them. Yes. Your palms would become slightly clammy. Your knees a little weak. And you would crave nothing more than to spend every single minute of your life with that person. Yes. And then he would die for his country and you'd sing sad songs and sleep with the Navy. Simpler times. Yes, yes. Yes. I hope you can pardon my forwardness. Yes. But I believe I've just fallen deeply in love with you. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, um, I, uh, please, uh, do forgive me. Oh, no, that's perfectly fine, although I feel my husband might take issue. Oh. Yes. Oh, you're married? Yes, ever so slightly. Oh. <laughs> oh, hang on, so am I. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, no. yes. No, oh, I, I am no. married, yes. <laughs> I, I, I suppose I forgot because I'm so desperately unhappy. You, you see, my wife doesn't understand me. That's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? Oh, oh no, I, I mean she literally doesn't understand me. She's Russian. Uh, <laughs> yes, I was trying to order a sham wow online and there was a bit of a cock up. Oh. Yes, I, I really wanted that, Shamwell. You're a bit of a 
silly weasel, oh, aren't you? Well, thank you. I suppose that's why I've fallen madly and deeply in love with you. Have you? Yes. Have you really? Yes. Oh. I tried to resist it the first minute and a half, but the last 45 seconds clinched it. Oh. My last 45 seconds always clinch it. <laughs> oh. I, uh, you have made me the happiest man on earth. I, I always knew love would find me at some point during my life. Well, it always does. As I was saying to my son the other day. Oh, son? Yes. Oh, you have a child? Yes. I don't see him too often. Oh. He's mostly taken care of by his nanny, Malaya. Oh, Filipino? No, he's a regular little white boy. Oh. <laughs> Do you have ch I want to say no, but I, I think I should check. Um, let me just see. Well, no pictures. No, I am childless. I have uh, no child. Uh, <laughs> well done. Well done, me. <laughs> Listen. Uh, yes. Why don't we run away together before we both come to our senses? Oh, but I can't. I, I couldn't possibly in these heels. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean literally. I have very bad knees. And I, uh, my running is really not up to snuff. You know, the thing of it is, I think it would be much more romantic if we simply did nothing. Really? Yes. Nothing? Nothing. You don't think we should consummate? Let's not talk of soup. I feel that we should, if we keep our feelings in, our passion will grow and our love will evolve like an affair to remember or the fast and the furious. Which one? Eight. Good one, good one. <laughs> oh, oh, the bride is just texting to say she's about to throw the bouquet. And like that bouquet, you have just thrown me aside. I suppose we shall never see each other again? Well, uh, I'll be at the reception. Oh, yes, I'll be there too, so I'll see you then. But then, after that. Well, are you going to the party that the best man is throwing? Yes, uh, yes, so I'll see you there. Uh, but after that. The breakfast gathering. I forgot the about the breakfast gathering, yes. This is the hardest non relationship. I've ever had to end. Endings are so difficult, aren't they? Yes, very difficult. If you don't end it at the right spot, it can go on and on. And then it becomes, you know, a, a little awkward. Yes. Awkward, yes. Yes. And irritating. I'm sorry? Irritating. Yes, Yes, so. there's nothing more irritating than a missed ending. No. Oh, but I think we just missed one. Now we have to wait until it comes around again. Yes, we do. Yeah. Any suggestions? No. Oh, no. All I've right. got nothing. No. I would say, though, if I may, I think we missed an ending around the bride's tweet. Oh, really? Yes. Well, isn't that nice of you to say? I suppose I should have expected something like that from you. Well, I must tell you, madam, I respect my integrity too much to have you boss me around like this. Goodbye. Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. So long. Oh. Oh, my, my own love, my darling. Are you sacrificing our love for an ending? Yes, well, someone bloody well has to. And I... oh. Well, now we just missed it again. I just, that was a... It was a no, fine no. ending, I thought, and now... No, it's all right, my darling. No tears, no tears. Well, no tears to you. I, well, I suppose a big romantic thing. That would be good. All right, just close your eyes and think of the queen. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Keep it going for Colin and Deb. Stay up here for a second, if you would. So I used to do this show in my living room, and then they asked me to do it here. You can check out the episodes on www.dangalia.ca. 
these guys have done the show in my living yeah. room before, but they forgot the gift I gave them. Oh, no. Oh, yes. We got some in the James mood, Last. In the mood for trumpets. In the mood for trumpets. Aren't we all? That's, Always. That's my gift to you. Thank you. It's so great to finally be able to pay you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dan, a big hand yeah. for Dan. Keep it going for Cole Rockery <laughs> and Ted McGrath. <laughs> Honest to God, they are the people you want to be. I swear to God, they're the nicest, best, funniest people in the city and the world. So we're going to move on. we got to stand up for you. You're just going to love her. I know it. Her name is Sandra Battaglini. Oh, my God, guys. Keep it going for Dan Gallia. No, no, no. Keep it going for her. Come on. And keep it going for everybody who's been on the show. Come on. I want to hear you guys. Seriously. Woo! Pop it up, right? So, uh, Kinestin, hey ladies? Anybody sitting on one right now, taking an ace? You know? Just fighting a little bit of an itch. Do you guys remember that Kinestin commercial though? You guys remember that Kinestin commercial where there was like this pilot helping an old lady put her luggage in the overhead compartment? And she looks at the camera and she's like, at my job, I can't afford to be distracted by something like a yeast infection. Good for you, okay? Because I'm always looking for a distraction, you know? Like, I've had to do some temp jobs in my time. Anybody else temp before? Pretty shitty, right? So I get this temp job, and I have to, like, number a document in Word. And it's pretty complicated, like 1.1a, 1.2b, 1.3c, right? And I spent my whole day numbering this document. And at the end of the day, I check my work, and I see that Word has renumbered everything, right? Because Word wants to fuck with you. Okay, it wants to play mind games. And then I started to daydream and I'm like, and I'm like, you know what I could use right now? A yeast infection, <laughs> right? To get me out of this bullshit that's become my life, you know? Cause I'll look at my coworkers, I'll be like, hey guys, gotta go, gotta put out a spicy fire. You know what I mean? And then walk out of the office with a canestin pill on my back like a firefighter, right? Hey guys, a little yeasty times, right? Why not? 2018, you know? If I was a stripper, that's what, that would be my stripper name, Yeasty Times, you know? I'd be like, hey, bro, you want a lap dance or a fogage? You know what I mean? Rosa Maria Basilico, oh yeah, yeah, tomato salsa. Woo, okay. I ate too much pizza, I'm fucking dying. Anybody else? Holy shit, that fucking arugula, fucking goat cheese, garlic. Right? I'm burping that shit up. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody want to take me home? Hey, little canestin, little arugula, what a fucking treat. Okay. Guys, I heard this couple arguing on the TTC, and the girl, the, the woman says to the guy, she's like, you know what? She goes, don't call me a honey. I hate when you call me honey. It's so demeaning. And I was like, oh my God, like, say that to the bees. You know what I mean? Like, you know how much buzzing they gotta do to make honey? And then you put their shit down like that, right? Like, that's why the bees are going extinct, because calling an empowered woman honey is demeaning, you know? Right? And then, and then, she, and then a little while later, she, he, the, the guy says, he's like, uh, how long does it take to go to the Eaton Center? And she's like, you know what? I don't want to talk to you right now. But you, what you said before really stuck. And I was like, this bitch is making her own puns. You know what I mean? Okay, new joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it out. Focaj. <laughs> Woo! Honest to God, I'm trying to digest while I'm up here. You know what I mean? Buddy, take it easy. Uh, take it easy. Uh, <laughs> I did this. I, I perform all sorts of crazy places. And uh, about a month ago, I was asked to perform at a ladies' marijuana retreat. Okay? In the woods, in the fucking woods. Like, it is as crazy as you could even imagine and more. There's, like, cannabis activists and witches, really, Wiccans. It was a fucking cauldron, you know? <laughs> like, literally. We did this thing in a circle where we got to bit, like, we get to bitch, say something great, and then every time you, bit, you bitched, you'd pass a joint, right? So we were soups high. And then after the woman says her bitch, everyone's like, hail, sister. But I said, hail, sister. You know what I mean? I'm like, wrong, uh, wrong situation. You know what I mean? 
And then, so, I, okay, so I, 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 this is the second time I've done this retreat, all right? And when I get there, I go and, you know, greet the people that I know, and I go to the cook, Danny, who's pretty awesome. And I was, and she, you know, she's got like, she's white, she's got dreads, you know, you imagine, right? And I was like, hey, Danny, what's up? She's like, I don't know. She goes, I went to the doctor, I have this really bad rash. And I was like, okay. And she's like, you want to see it? I mean, not really, but go ahead, you know? So she lifts her leg, and it's a fucking serious bad rash, right? And then she's like, she, I, I'm, like is she, I'm like, you know what? It's going to go away. She's like, yeah, and you know what? I have a really, I, I started dating somebody. He's really hot. Do you want to see a picture of him? I'm like, sure. She goes, and he's a real kinky motherfucker, right? So she shows me a picture of him. He's really hot, but he's got like a knife dangling from his hands. And I was like, Danny, I go, this guy's hot, but what's with the knife? She's like, well, he's a trapper, and he hunts. And he cuts my clothes off in floor play. I was like, and she, you know what the good thing is though? She's a sewer, right? So she could sew that shit all back up. Good for her, you know what I mean? She sews her own clothes. Anyways, you guys are not bad. What the fuck is this, a t-shirt? What's happening here? Oh, it's a napkin? Okay, take it easy. All right. Whew, I gotta take it. Whoa, I gotta let the old labs take a breather. You know what I mean? The old labia, right ladies? Oh, guys are always like, my balls, my balls, my big bad balls getting in the way, right? Chicks got labia too, right, ladies? That shit gets twisted up when you don't want it to, right? You're at church, you're trying to fucking sing, and you're like, oh my God, my labs are twisted in my pantyhose. What do I gotta do to untwist them, right? What do we gotta do? We gotta put our leg up on the microphone stand or the fucking speaker, give it an old rest. <laughs> Oh my God, I love performing in front of these people because they're all my sister's colleagues. They're all, they all work for the school board right over here. They, like all this shit you've been saying to these poor people, eating out, all this garbage. Well, they, none of you guys work in the school system no more, right? Oh, so fuck it, right? <laughs> Speaking about eating out though, guys, everyone's trying, everyone wants to do something new lately. And you know, everyone's talking about it's eating ass right? Eating ass. It's a fucking epidemic. All the millennials are going nuts with this eating ass. You can't have a conversation with a millennial before I'm like, oh yeah, I eat ass. And you know why? That's because we have too much food. You know what I mean? There's too much food. Nobody has to hunt for food anymore. So what are they going to do? Eat ass, right? I can't deal with it. I'm like, this is insane. When we were kids, my dad would always threaten us. If we were spo being spoiled, he's like, you know what you guys need? You guys need a famine, right? He's Italian, grew up during the Second World War. That's what everybody needs. When the famine comes, you think anybody's going to be eating ass? No, right? Your husband's out fucking all day in the Oak Ridge's Moraine, you know, foraging for berries, right? He comes home with a basket. And you're like, babe, I love the basket, but you want to eat my ass? He's like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you know what I had to do to get these berries, right? And you want me to get on all fours and eat your fucking ass? We don't even have a lot of water. This ass isn't clean. Anyways, I did this for Dan's dad. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's like, are you disgusted? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. When I looked at you, or you were like, he's just tasting... The, it's the aftertaste of eating ass. That's what he's got going on. Or something. I don't know. Anyways, he doesn't look too happy. What are you going to do? Um, what are you going to do? Guys, my family lives in Woodbridge. Big surprise. Eh? Anybody from Woodbridge here? No? Are you kidding me? Nobody? What? They're from, where are you guys from? Brampton? <laughs> Toronto? I just burped. Did you hear that? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to sneak a burp in. They, I mean, nobody would have said, nobody would have heard it if I didn't say it. Oh, fuck. Nobody from Woodbridge. That's crazy. Well, anyways, let's shit on them, right? I don't know what it is about Woodbridge, but every time I hit Highway 7, I just want to fight. <laughs> I mean, people... My people piss me off, okay? And I've gotten into a couple of fights in Woodbridge. I'm gonna tell you about one of them. Uh, it was my mom's birthday, and uh, we were making Caesar salad, and I wanted, I just, I was gonna just run to Longo's to go grab some bacon because we wanted to be authentic, right? So I was like, this is gonna be quick. And when I get to Longo's, I get the bacon, I go to the express line, but there's this like Woodbridge Gina princess like unloading her very full cart onto the conveyor, okay? And everybody is 
hands, and the cashier doesn't know what to do, and she mouths, I'm sorry, to me. And I was like, fuck this, man. I got to say something. This is bullshit, right? So I say to the woman, I'm like, uh, excuse me, ma'am. This is the express line, like one to eight items. And she's like, I have children. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything, right? And she's like, you know what? Why don't you mind your own business? And then I said to her, you're an asshole, right? It's true. Right in front of her kids, right in front of her kids. And you know what? They needed to hear that that day, all right? Because all their short lives, they're like, I think my mom's a good mom, right? But then I show up, drop the truth, and they're like, oh, yeah, I always knew something was up with this bitch. I always knew this bitch was an asshole, right? You know. You fucking know, right? Anyways, and then she says to me, she's like, you know what? You need to learn how to talk in front of children. And I'm like, you're right. That was so aggressive. So I take one look at her little guy. He's two, and he's screaming like an animal, like worst piece of shit kid you could imagine. I'm like, we already have enough garbage on the planet. Now we got to deal with it. Don't awe. No, no, no awes for these little fuckers. I'm telling you right now. Okay? Seriously. And then her four-year-old, I love that. Aw. No, no. Fuck it. This, uh, and then her little daughter is four, and she's staring at me something fierce. She wouldn't let up. I was like, what the fuck is up with this kid? Like, to the point where I was like, is she giving me the evil eye? You know? Because the evil eye gets tossed around in Woodbridge like confetti. It's true. That's why, all that's why all these old Italian people got to get their knees replaced. Do you notice this? It's an epidemic with my people. Eventually the knees go, you know? And if one Italian finds out that another Italian is getting their knees replaced, they're like, you know what? I'm going to do two knees at the same time. Fuck Marie, right? <laughs> like who competes in knee replacements? Italian people do. Anyways, so here's this kid staring at me, right? And I couldn't take it. Finally, I say to the kid, I'm like, what are you looking at, right? I'm an adult person asking a kid. And then at that moment, she averts her gaze and looks at her mother. And guys, the kid was cross-eyed. I asked a cross-eyed kid, what are you looking at, right? <laughs> Probably a lot of things. Okay, listen, don't fucking moan on that shit because she was a little twat, you understand? Just like her mother, that's where it starts, four years old, right? If you keep putting water on this twat, it's just gonna keep growing into a bigger and bigger twat. And then you're like, why the fuck is Toronto full of twats? It starts in, that, it starts in the Longos and Woodbridge, you know what I mean? You gotta cut that shit off, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Whew, I'm a little more digested. I'm a little more digested, it's all good, yeah. Um, Christmas time, I know that was a while ago. Did everybody have a great Christmas? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. I love Christmas because my dad does the Christmas decorating. He specializes in the nativity scene, all right? It's true, you should see what he does. It's like, it's a whole reinterpretation of the birth, all right? And it's like, there's the usual suspects like Joseph, Mary, the three wise men, baby G's. That's, it. That's what he calls Jesus, baby G's, okay? But then there's like a whole bunch of other characters that I, I haven't seen in the Bible, okay? And they're, really, they're like, they're, a lot of them are just like knickknacks from around the house and bonbonier, okay? You know what bonbonier are? That's what it is. So, so there's like fucking turtles. There's turtles, you know? You know the chocolate turtles? It's like ceramic collectible fucking turtles. Like, that's amazing. You know, you think about it, like, like a, a turtle, turtle showed, showed up, up at, at the, the fucking, fucking birth. birth. They're, they're slow, slow, you know what I mean? mean? That's, that's, a, that's a miracle that, that these fucks took that, you know, they, they'd been probably traveling for 400 years. They knew. They're like, I see the light 400 years ahead. I'm going to get there, you know? And then, then there's like a ceramic pig. There's a pig. Like, that's pretty amazing, right? Like, who would have thought a Jew would invite a pig to a birth? But there you go, right? And then there's a unicorn. Guys, a unicorn. Like, that's pretty gay. Am I right? <laughs> But so is a story about a guy who's so into, into S&M that he willingly gets nailed to a cross for his daddy. Hey, hey, ooh! <laughs> Let's have fun, right? And then, and then, guys, there's like a flute player from the Middle Ages. A flute player. Isn't that unbelievable? Like, that's a time-traveling entertainer. But he's not the only one because beside him, my dad built like a miniature church with like miniature pews and a miniature tabernacle. And then inside is like a, a, a G, Jesus, like an adult Jesus serving his own body of Christ to precious moments figurines. Isn't that fucked up? 
Like, either my dad is meta or he's nuts, you know? And then outside of the church is just Santa Claus on a rocking chair, right? Because he's too fat to fit inside of the church. Anyways, guys, that's my life. No big deal. No big tits. Did anybody get here on the TTC? Right? Have you guys noticed the TTC is getting into apparel? They're like, they've got like, uh, they've got t-shirts and fucking ball caps. And, and their whole campaign is uh, take the TTC home. Introducing even more ways to take the TTC home. And you can like order all this shit. And I'm like, who's on the TTC thinking, what can I take home from this? You know what I mean? Like that, oh, I'm gonna take home that pole. You know what I mean? I take home that pole. I'll bring it home, put it in the bedroom, you know what I mean? Do a little strip tease. I won't even wipe it down, as is, right? <laughs> Look at this guy, he's like, ew. That's how, right, you take the TTC home, okay? And then, I don't know if you saw this, there's like another, it's a sexual assault awareness campaign. It's called hashtag this is where. And so they have these like little anecdotes, and the one that I saw was this, it said, Marta was riding along the TTC one day with her son when all of a sudden a man came and sat across from them. When Marta wasn't looking, the man exposed himself to her son. When Marta looked back, she was horrified. How will she ever explain to her son what happened? And I'm like, well, she could start off by saying, hey, listen, son, I don't know what the fuck Louis C.K. is doing on the TTC. You know what I mean? Take it is, right? I thought he lived in New York. You look like my cousin. This, are you Italian, buddy? Yeah, totally. Totally Italian right here. I could see it in the face. Like, or, where, where, from, where from? Abruzzo? Friuli. Nobody, does anybody even fucking know what that means? No. Cheese, did somebody say? That was the best, cheese. Yeah, it's true, Friulan, are you kidding me? Love that shit. But they, they claim they have their own language. That's the Friulan. They're like, fuck the rest of Italy. We got our own cheese, you know? Every, every, every part of Italy has their own cheese. I have my own cheese, you know what I mean? Stuck right over here, take a look at this. A nice fucking layer of cheese right here. Um, I'll do one last thing, guys, before I uh, hit the road. Um, anybody uh, online dating? Anybody? Yeah, which one, this guy? What do you want, Tinder? Bumble? Anybody else? No? They're all shit. I don't know. I used to, I used to be on, on dating sites. Not anymore, so you can put your phones away, everybody. But I, I had to get off because every time I go on these dating sites, I always got asked the anal question, like all the time. And I didn't get it because my profile pic was my face, not my ass. You know what I mean? Like guys would be like, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Do you do anal? Like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like right out of the gates like this? Like hold the anal, you know? Hold it for, I don't know, when we're in the sack, slip it in, see where it goes. Right? But then I quickly discovered it's not quite a slip in, you know? It's more like a jackhammer trying to split up a sidewalk. You know, like, right? Like I'm just saying, anal sex isn't like it is in the movies. I love these people laughing right now, right? It's not like it is in the movies. They make it look so easy, you know? Like in Los Angeles, in those condos with the palm trees, right? And then the camera does that close up into the chick's ass. I'm like, what are we supposed to find the truth in this black hole? You know what I mean? Push it out. Push the, like, let's, wider lens. You know what I mean? Anyways, uh, so that, that's been, that was always my Tinder, my online experience. It was crazy. But my last... Experience on Tinder was with a guy named uh, Joey Agostino. Does anybody know Joey Uggs? No? Well, anyways, he's killing it on Tinder. And this was his message to me. That somebody knows Joey Agostino, I swear to God. Or, or it's you. Is it you? I've been, I'm like, one day he's going to show up. He'll be like, it was me. Oh, okay. Well, here it goes. This is what, so this is what he said to me, right? First thing. He's like, I really want to eat you out. Right? And then I was like you know what, I got nothing going on tonight, <laughs> right? But it's because he said, really, you know? Because if he, if he would have just said, I want to eat you out, insecure me would be like, really? But he took care of all that shit, right? So I'm like, let's go to the races, Agostino, right? 
So then we were trying to figure out like where we would meet up and we agreed we'd meet up halfway between where he lived and I lived and he lived at like Young and Lawrence and I live at like Carla and the Lakeshore. So then he says, he goes, uh, why, don't, uh, why don't we meet up over at the uh, gas station at Young and the 401? And I'm like, how the fuck is that halfway? And what are we gonna do when we get to the gas station? Right, he goes, well, he goes, there's a couple of really tall trees. I'll park my car behind there. I got an Acura, leather seats, right? And then I was like, you know what? Who the fuck am I, right? What, I gotta be fancy? I need a bed? No, 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 no. I can get a lick down at a gas station like the next guy, right? Cause then when I'm done, I'll just go fill up my gas, right? I'm right there. And then, and then I'll go into the on the run, right? Grab a couple of wipes, wipe it down, come to the rec room, nobody knows. <laughs> Anyways, guys, you were amazing. Thank you so much. Keep it going for my friend Dan Gallia. No, you keep it going. I know, you for keep Sandra, it going. You no, keep it going. You keep it going. You keep it going. You keep it going. You keep it going. Hey, Sandra, don't leave yet. Okay. I want to know more about your life. Okay. Uh, where can people see you if they want to see you? Oh, I have a show. Um, uh, on Tuesday on the Danforth at Pape and um, Danforth and last Tuesday of the month and then Friday April 13th it's a show called Saints and Sinners amazing at, yeah and also Sandra right now has a petition going and uh, yeah. can you tell them a little bit about the petition yes. I encourage you to sign this petition yes that would be amazing so I don't know if you guys are aware that stand up comedy isn't considered an art form in Canada so stand-up comedians have no access to funding. And we basically do this, like, kind of mostly from our own pocket. So we're trying to change that so that we could get grants like other artists and musicians do. So if you love comedy, uh, go to canadianstandup.ca and click on the button that says sign the petition. We need your signatures. Our goal is 100,000 signatures, and we'd love your support. So please do it, because it would really, it would change everything for us in this country. And yeah, thank you so much. And Sandra's making that all happen. Give it up for Sandra Battaglini. Thank you, thank you. She's so great. All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. We got one more act for you, and then we are done, but she is such a sweet, good act. You've seen her once before. Let's bring her back. Give it up for Nisa. Thanks, Nisa. I 
is always like this, they just try to stop me. The first of the month at the laundromat, not many nights better than that. Going in dirty, coming out clean, I'm feeling righteous, feeling me. I slept in a boxcar and 30 below. Thought I'd die, but I let it fire. Even kids lose sleep, even kids lose sleep. Thinking about shit like this. Even kids lose sleep, even kids lose sleep. Thinking about shit like this. Even kids lose sleep, even kids lose sleep. Thinking about shit like this. Even kids lose sleep, even kids lose sleep.
Thank you very much. Give it up for Nisa, everybody. Nisa, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks, Sam. She's so great, isn't she? Um, so I know your album's coming out April 13th, you said? Yeah, I've got an EP coming out. And yeah. you got an EP coming out. And what's it called again? Champion of Love. Champion of Love. Look for that April 13th online. And uh, thank you so much, Nisa. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so much to everyone that did the show. Colin Mockery, Deb McGrath, Sandra Battaglini, Garrett Jameson, Marito Antonio Lopez, Mike Rita. We got Nisa. We got, thank you, Dan Tamizian, for making the video. Thank you, Primo, for being in the video. Thank you to our tech people. Let's give them a round of a hot plus. Thank you to all the servers, the bartenders. Make sure you tip them. Next show is April 27th. Please come back. We got CBC's Ali Hassan. Laugh Sabbath's James Hartnett. We got the Templeton Philharmonic. We got a band called Quite Nice, who are quite nice. And we also got Phil Luzzi. Come back if you enjoyed the show. Tell your friends if you hated the show. Just never talk about it. That's fine with me. Thank you very much. Have a great night.